In this video, I'll work through an example where we find the inflection points for a function. In this case, our function is f of x equals 2x to the fourth minus 16x cubed plus 12x squared plus 34. What we need to do to start this problem is remember that an inflection point is a place where the second derivative changes sign, where f double prime changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. So the very first thing we're going to need to do for this type of problem is find a formula for f double prime. To find f double prime, we've got to start by finding f prime. When we take the derivative of 2x to the fourth, we get 8x cubed. Derivative of 16x cubed is 48x squared. Derivative of 12x squared is 24x. And the derivative of 34 is 0. That's f prime, so f double prime is the derivative of f prime, which is going to be 24x squared minus 96x plus 24. Much like critical values are places where f prime can change from positive to negative, or from negative to positive. Inflection points are places where f double prime changes from positive to negative, or from negative to positive. We find critical values by setting f prime equal to zero, so we're going to find inflection points by setting f double prime equal to zero. So 24x squared minus 96x plus 24 equals zero. Well, that's a quadratic, and we can factor it a little bit. We can factor out a 24, so you get x squared, minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. But unfortunately, we can't factor x squared minus 4x plus 1. So we're going to have to use our quadratic formula. Quadratic formula tells us that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. In this case, we can divide both sides by 24 so we just have x squared minus 4x plus 1, so my b is negative 4, so we get minus minus 4, plus or minus, minus 4 squared, minus 4 times my a is 1, and my c is 1. That's all divided by 2a. When we work that out in our calculator, we're going to get two solutions. 0 0.268 and 3.732. So those are places where my second derivative might change sign, where my second derivative might change from positive to negative or from negative to positive. The way that we tell whether or not these are really inflection points is similar to the first derivative test. We're going to draw a number line, and on that number line we're going to place our two potential values, 0.268 and 3.732. We're going to pick a number less than 0.268, we're going to pick a number in between 0.268 and 3.732, and we're going to pick a number that's greater than 3.732, and we're going to plug those values into f double prime. Remember, we're interested in knowing whether f double prime changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. We know that it's zero at these two points, so it might be changing sign there, but we need to find out for sure. So let's pick some numbers. Picking a number less than 0.268, well, we could pick zero, f double prime of 0 works out to be 24, and that's positive. Picking a number between 0.268 and 3.732, how about 1? When we plug 1 into our second derivative, we get negative 48, and that's negative. So that tells us that right away that we've got an inflection point at this first x value, because my f double prime changed from positive to negative. Now we've got to pick one more x value, something bigger than 3.732, how about 4? When we plug 4 into f double prime, that turns out to be 24, which again is positive, and that means that I have another inflection point, because at 3.732, my second derivative changed from negative to positive. So I've got two inflection points. But inflection points are points, which means that they have coordinates. The x-coordinate of my first inflection point is 0.268, and the x-coordinate of my second inflection point is 3.732. But I need to find the corresponding y-coordinate. And the way that I'm going to find the corresponding y-coordinate is by plugging into the original function. So f of 0.268. If I plug into the original function, that's going to give me 34.564. 
and if I plug 3.732 into my original function, I'm going to get negative 242.564. So that is my solution. So again, just to recap, the process for finding inflection points is you set f double prime equal to zero, solve. Whatever solutions you get are potential inflection points. The way that you find out whether they are actually inflection points is by drawing a number line and plugging in the so-called in-between values. Once you see whether or not your f double prime actually changes sign, wherever it did change sign, those are inflection points. And to find the y-coordinate of the inflection point, you plug into the original function f.